Hey everybody, and welcome back to another replay cast. Since it's still gonna be a while until we get our hands on South Africa, I decided I'm gonna delay the cast of the Grand Finals and do another best of three from the tournament, because I think... I don't think I can bridge the time until South Africa is out with just the Grand Finals. And I, I'm not in the mood to play the current version of Wargame. So, we're gonna... Cast Crot versus General Boulanger. And Crot is playing Dutch German Coalition Mechanized in the very first match. What an interesting choice. Um, personally, when it comes to mech decks, not a huge fan of Dutch German. I don't really think you get something too significant over mixed blue mech. Then again, maybe he's gonna play the dead two later on, so I don't know. Um you sure you get a Marder 2 and Panzer 90, uh, both of which are pretty nice. You get Reservists, and Natrias are one of the best Reservists in the game. So those are probably the two biggest seals, like you don't get a Tiger. KWS is nice, um, but you still have a l very, very strong planes in mix, right? You have Kurnas, for example. Um, tanks are... <clears throat> I'm not a fan. MX-13 is cool, but that's about it. You obviously lose the MX-10, but the MX-10, of course, is more expensive. Um, but of course, no Merkava to A. Uh, I'm surprised to see no Stotrip 95 at all. They're like one of the best shock squads in the entire game, especially with mech. They're gonna be really, really strong. And given the deck that he's gonna face and the map that he's gonna play on, which you'll soon see, and now that I mentioned, you might guess it, the 84 might be really, really nice to have. The 20 RPM and 19 AP, especially on elite that quote unquote only 50% accuracy, not a huge deal. So I definitely think I would have replaced one of those cards of Grenadiers with the card of Stotrip 95. And that Grenadiers YPR combo, it's good. But again, on the map that we're gonna play on, maybe not the best. This is very, very good for like these, you know, be fights between forests, right? Like, let's say the middle part of highway, where you fight at like 1000 meter range, where you're close enough to the infantry that you can make use of that range scaling, but far enough away that the infantry can't fire back at you, at the autocannon vehicle, right? Um, and the map that we're gonna play on, or they're gonna play on, uh, they're fine, but they don't excel at that, I feel at least. Fig Wars 2, uh, Panzergrenz, so yeah, especially, I mean, I guess Panzergrenz are cheaper than Sotrop 95, but I think a kind of, actually they're not, right? Yeah, yeah, what am I talking about? That's that's just I don't know. Is it laziness? Did he forget about Star Trip ninety five? Well, he still has a five point left, right? But it costs the same price. Pentagons have a battle rifle, which is generally, especially for forest fights, considered better than assault rifles. But a Star Trip ninety five have the mini me, which is just better than the MG three. They have a significantly better AT weapon and a much better five pointer, right? The Pentagons five pointer. The M113, one armor gets instantly popped by any tank or anti tank weaponry of infantry. So, I don't know why he didn't go for Sotrop 95. They even have the same availability, so. I'm just baffled. I don't know. <laughs> it's. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not like the end of the world. It doesn't suddenly completely change the deck. But I think it would it would make the deck better. But, yeah. Uh, Let's, let's say not insignificant amount, but again, it wouldn't change the whole world or something, right? Don't get me wrong. Support, nothing special. I assume the M109, honestly, probably for fob sniping. That's probably the reason. But I probably, if I had a choice, would probably go for the M110A2. I'm not a huge fan of these intermediate M109s. If I go M109, it's either the cheap ones or like the high-end ones, like the American or the, or the Dutch upgraded one that you don't get in Mac. Other than that, a fairly standard tanks, nothing special. Recon, nothing special. I mean, I guess I probably would have replaced the MX 13 and one of the vehicles to get the recon version of the MX 13. I used to not be a huge fan of it, but these days I actually preferred over the tank one. The stealth is just so good. Escort and ECR is surprising, but. ECR then again also gives us quite a big hint on what deck he is playing against. 
Um, but yeah, only obviously only get one card of peace right now. Probably instead of the MDU, I probably would just run the OCU instead. Gives you some AA capabilities as well to, as a backup for the K OBS, but nothing major. Then again, against the deck he's playing against, he doesn't really need that many attack planes. And that's it. Yeah, a few surprises here and there, but you know, you can't really do too much wrong when it comes to a mech deck. Yeah, let's take a look at the General Blanchard's deck. And maybe you have guessed it, you know, he's playing Scandi mech. Uh, whether he played mech or not, maybe you wouldn't have guessed, but Scandi, you know, obviously being, especially with the automatics, very dependent on radar when it comes to anti-air. They have the EOTS IHawk, but still the automatic is a big deal. And if you know you're playing against Scandi, you do want to put in a seat plane. Because if your opponent realizes or knows even that you have no seat plane and can just leave this thing on, it will fucking shred everything. It is it is genuinely an actual OP unit, but yeah. At this point, you know, even though it is OP and it should get nerfed, it is only available in two decks and they do depend on it and nerfing it. And given that they have like holds, especially scanning holds in a tank tap, you know, it would kind of cascade out of control, so to speak. Um, that's it. Scandi mech, uh, I believe General Boulanger really likes this map and he pilots, his, pilots it quite well. Um, obviously, you know, their tanks are quite lacking. He really, really likes the 103D, I believe. I think it's fine, but I think sometimes it's a bit too overrated and especially against certain decks, not having a stabilizer and not having a turret, rather, can really, really, really hurt, right? But then there are situations where this 15 RPM outloaded just melts shit right so it's a very its performance is just not consistent but that's fine right it's kind of in the nature of the tank uh 102 and 105 honestly you don't really need those yeah deck really really revolves on infantry more so than other mech decks because scan in and of itself revolves a lot more around infantry and um, because of that cv90 because of the fight chemica 90 um m41's automatics right that's mostly what they rely on. Tanks are just, they're a lot less needed, I would say, than they are for other decks. Or let me put it that way, the deck doesn't really use as many. That said, uh, logistics have fairly standard, except for the usage of this one. I wonder if this might be because it's amphibious. Uh, the map we're playing on has some rivers, so it could be nice, but I still very much prefer 20 point supply trucks. Um, SRF 940, fairly standard deck. You do only get two cards of the good Danish five pointer, so those will start to crop only come this. But isn't there another Carl Gustav Squid, the Storm Engineer? Yeah, but I also only get a basic five pointer. Could also use them in them, but he has a Storm Engineer 90s there as well. If Garden Dragona Spam Gewerman in the NM135 CV90, fairly standard. But uh, there's always a lot of stuff that you want to fit in in Scandi Mac, I feel. Support them fairly centered as well, I think. LVKV90 is, I said it in the tier list video, less of an AA piece, more of just an all round support unit. Infantry support, anti vehicle support, and obviously anti air support. Um, really all rounder. I really like this, but don't expect this to actually do particularly well against planes. It kind of struggles against that, but it's fine. Automatic IHOG for some non radar. Coverage, of course. Beacon 1A has 30 seconds 30 seconds aim time, but the exact same rate of fire as the Beacon 1C, so that's gonna pump out some shells, like there's no tomorrow, and of course the default mortar. Recon, everything else is standard basically. Uh, of course, the TGB 13, in case you didn't know, much, much higher off-road speed than any other five-point truck that you have access to, right? Using Spade in there in the M103. I assume because of the op uh, excuse me, of ob absolutely horrible off-road speed on these five-point trucks. So you might actually, depending on where you're gonna go, fa faster with this five-pointer here. But uh, yeah, and of course, M41 spam. That's this deck. And in case you didn't guess it, we're gonna play on L in a very small place. We have Krat on team one and General Blanger on team two. Crud playing blue spawn here on Delta and blue and share red spawn on Alpha. 
So let's see how this develops. I did see, I think, the first two or three minutes live, so I vaguely know how the opener goes, at least for Krat. I saw it live when Krat streamed it on Discord in the bootcamp server. So yeah, let's let's take a look. Last time, actually, we, he played this map against Greyhound as well, uh, sorry, Blitzwar as well, where he started with an MF35 around the flank. Doesn't look like he's gonna do the same thing with an escort this time around. Just wait until it stops so we can take a better look. All right. Uh, same, ch similar cheeky position. Except I think last time he was, I think, in this bush. And I, and I did actually say in the replay, I prefer down in this bush. Um, obviously, you know, I casted this way after this match, so he didn't know that he said that. Um, very light in mid, Rican, Pantograms. Base or Randy, I don't know. Looks, Recon, Minan, incredibly light in mid, but if he spots the push early enough, he could reroute from this way, of course. Down here we have hordes of reservists. You know, if you look at the veterancy, reservists obviously come at the very lowest veterancy level unless you upvet them. But this big mech, of course, every infantry in the infantry tab gets one extra veterancy, so. Those can only be reservists. So Hordes of Reservists, actually, I mean, just four squads, some Recon, uh, BGS, Lux, and some Pentagons, and three Leopard 2A1s. Obviously, they have turrets, they have stabilizers, unlike the 103Ds, but especially this position is, I think, in general, in the entire game, one of the best positions for the 103D to be in. You cover a lot of important ground, you cover the, the road towards the town, you cover even sort of, you know, this cross between these forests, right? And typically t enemy tanks will be here as well. So if you want, if you push golf from Bullinger's perspective, generally speaking, you want to go for the sound, you want to go for this forest and then push this forest here. With the tanks here, you're going to stop losing the town and you're going to, you know, stop stuff uh, going from side by side. Also going to be tanks, etc, etc. And um, that's basically the whole strategy. But yeah, this, this force is key. Um, let's see what Bullinger is doing. For sake of M41s to one of these, those are probably Lip Garden. I didn't pay attention to whether he upvetted this line infantry. Um, could be Lip Garden or upvetted Dragoner. Matic, RBS 56, Fennec, and Scott Defender. Scott Defender on the other side, probably flying around. I assume maybe to spot his fob, I don't know. Or just spot whatever might be sneaking around on Krat's end. I assume he's gonna try to uh, drive around with looks here. Automatic from it as well, and 1 of 3D. So a lot more in this, in this part of the map than. Excuse me, than Krat. So let's see how this develops. And neither player is starting with a second CV. Actually, never mind. Crot does start with a second CV. So I guess it kind of cancels out the more expensive investment into the middle part of the map from Boulanger. Speed this up a bit until they meet. Immediately some base defense. Not a fan of these M42s. Uh, Looks is not gonna spot that stuff, by the way. Not a fan of these M42s. They're not very consistent, but I guess if you get them in mech and, you know, upvetted. They're not even upvetted. Oh, no, I think they are. I think they can actually come at very, very low veterancy. Um, yeah, still, not a fan of them. But I'm not sure. I don't think there's anything gonna stop those healers from spotting the fob. Unless, for some reason, Crot decides to buy a plane here to test the waters because he thinks there might be healers. Sure. Just want to quickly check if he spots those. This one, but I don't think he does either. Here's something before we go down there. Here's something that I do not like to see. I am not a fan of just completely abandoning this, right? Preferably, I like to send something in here because if you have infantry here and it doesn't die or doesn't get killed, pushed out by your opponent, then you know this is safe. Or like somewhat safe at least, right? There's always a chance something just moves around this way or just just at the edge here. You never know. But you have a rough idea of, you know, it might be safe and then you can just move these to test the waters a bit more. Um, 
And you know, even if it's just two reserve squad, or even a single reserve squad, right? There's 10 points, 10 or 20 points, or line infantry squad. It's always worth the investment in my eyes. And if you don't want to do that, at the very, very, very least, I would put something here. Um, if someone does something like Crot, right? Just fast move something around this way. Uh, unless it's amphibious, they have to cross this, right? Because if you want to go this way, they have to go there. If you want to cross, cross this bridge, they have to go there. So having something here to at least stop or at the very least alert you if something tries to go there, so valuable. Um, I think the absolute minimum is to buy this as soon as possible, right? Instead of like two of these, I would have preferred if he instead immediately bought something for this forest. Not a fan of just abandoning this. You're giving this up for free. Because if your opponent expects you to not push there, right? At the very least, you, you get the foothold for free. And later on in the game, if you have to like counter cap or cap this, this might save your ass. All for the investment of what? 15 points, 10, 20 points maybe? I think it's I think it's not worth just completely abandoning it. Not at all. But anyway, back to the action. Immediately buys the, look, he buys immediately M109. Come on, just invest like a few points to put an inventory squad there. Here's one reason why I don't like BGS. They only have they only have good stealth. They are incredibly cheap and I have the exact same optics as exception optics regen, for example, right? But militia regen like being BGS and the East German Grenzer, the only ones that have good set instead of very good. Even line infantry is very good. And you could just see where this made a difference, right? They're very closer to the edge and suddenly they were spotted by those fans game Sekere. Regular Rican or Shock Rican, but he doesn't he doesn't get Shock Rican of course, would not be spotted there. So that's why I'm not a fan of them. I used to run them as well. And they're like, don't get me wrong, right? They're not like worthless or anything, but I still think line infantry generally is better. Or at least if you only run one card of freaking infantry, I wouldn't rely only on BGS. As a second card of something, different story. If you need passive scouts on like a side of the map where um, you don't expect like we can be this close, perfectly fine. But for frontline stuff, no. Okay, Fob's been spotted. Fennec's not stopping to try to finish it off. They definitely would be able to do that. Fennec has an incredibly high rate of fire on its gun. Um, okay, Krod does not notice, buys a gap heart. Meanwhile, Two ones get engaged by the one of threes, making use of the rate of fire. Both shot four rounds already. And one of the leopard two ones goes down. As M41 as well, of course, incredibly strong fire support for the prize. Just like they tanked have once, but for the same price, you get optics and stealth. Very nice. Bob, of course, been spotted. No beacon just yet. No Xeer's got a pen there. And those are need up with a Dragoner, okay. Yeah, and the other two ones just very, very low. These RBS 56, of course, hit like a truck. And in situations like these, you might even prefer them being 5 men instead of 2 men. Sometimes, because the difference, of course, between RBS 56 and, let's say, Milan, besides the different weapon, is, of course, they're 5 men, which means they're more durable and also carry more ammo, 8 80 champs instead of 6. But again, they have good stealth instead of very good, which means they get detected more easily, as you can see here. I'm pretty sure they took some direct hits for from the two A1s. I don't think it was just the M103 uh, firing there. I think this is the first salvo actually coming in. Of course, finishes it off, but it obviously means you get spotted earlier. However, especially in this town, when you can expect Recon to be here, maybe even there, unless it's BGS because they don't have the stealth. Uh, it's actually very easy to get line of sight on even two men uh, infantry firing out of there. So in scenarios like these, having two or five men doesn't really make a difference. Or rather having good or very good stuff might not make a difference. So the five HP very very valuable here. And of course means that unless you're firing artillery or have huge amount of fire support, it's really hard to get rid of them. And one of these kill another Leopard 2A1. That was a damage one. Was it four HP or five HP? Yeah, kind of reckless to just assault with it like that. When you know it was damaged, when you know there were two or not three Ds. But I guess he just felt pressure to somehow deal with those M41s and such. Uh, because, of course, his Natres aren't very good on their own and do need fire support. But funnily enough, direct fire support, not necessarily Dutch Germany's strength. They have good meat shields, they have some good supporting units, right? AA is nice, the mortars are nice. Some, they have some nice planes, but 
The direct fire support for a map like Hell in a Very Small Plains, not so great. For less, you know, less crowded, less narrow maps, slightly bigger maps, again highways, prime example, the fire support works very well, right? The MX-13s, their autogun vehicles, I mentioned this, like these thousand meter ranges, but it likes these deep forest fights where you go up, have to like worry about the infantry AT, not so much. Fastcam Sega gets spotted by those BGS and presumably killed. Barely manages to break line of sight thanks to those buildings. Re upping that ping. Anyone A. Oh, it's getting counter battered actually. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I agree with that immediate M109 buy. Like, if I don't have access to like high end artillery. Especially in uh, East Germany or something, I just prefer spamming mortars. 5 HE mortar spam, or honestly any mortar spam, very, very strong. Existing around this one got detected by the NM135. But this was very, very briefly, so presumably um, General Bunager didn't met, uh, spot this. Especially not since anything got damaged, right? Nobody got hit here, took any damage. So you don't get this ping on the map when the unit gets damaged. Looks has less accuracy, but has two armor. And yeah, because it has two armor, or be rather because the N135 has one armor at one. And um, yep, there we go. Bullinger is, uh, spots it. Fob took some damage because the beacon was firing next to it. Uh, but I'm, I assume this looks is gonna spot the Fob. More Nantre is coming in. I guess the Dragoner, these MX 13s are gonna do fine. But the M41s will just. Deal with those five pointers, no problem. But their one weakness fuel. <laughs> Ran out of fuel. Where is the last 2A1? There it is. Okay. Honestly, it makes sense trying to uh, position them where the one of the D's in this bush just can't do much to them, but he can still stop this stuff from coming in. However, it's always a bit scary because you, this is just open, right? You never know what is actually in there. In this case, of course, there's nothing there. But it could be files can make an idea or anything else thinking around, so it's personally not a fan. Uh, at the moment, of course, it's working out. But once again, we saw this BGS, they were sitting here, spotted by those files can say got a 90. Um, and that means, of course, you can't put your recon up there, which means you can't spot the 103D in this bush as easily. Now, that's actually out of law ammunition. You don't see that every day. But yeah, there, there's those Bryonics just going. Shooting at the 5 pointer because there's only one armor. And another 2 one coming. And another 2 one coming. And it, there we go, BGS spotted by those files. Can say I got it. And recon is of course key. Oh, there we go. I assume it's gonna get the beacon. Uh, of course, Budanger has another one. Fob is also spotted. With the RH202 being the highest RPM autogun in the game, tied with some other stat clones, etc., of course, it should not take too long to, to kill the Fob with the autocannon. I think the effective HP, if I'm not wrong, of the, on the Fob is actually 75, even though it only shows 20. Unfortunately for Krot, though, he didn't actually. Uh, Shoot at the beacon. I think he was he was didn't pay full attention. He knows where the fob is though, and the fob is very very low, so he sh should have no problem finishing it off. And I would say it's gonna hurt Bullinger more than it does Crud, because Beacon One A just it needs a fob. Without the fob, your beacons, you're gonna have a rough time. Two one got optical failure there by those lift garden. Lift garden not doing too much until he wants right against two armor. They deal three, two damage I think two damage. I think up until like an 8 AP difference or something, it's the same as kinetics. So 18 minus 16 is 2, the other bit 2 is 1, plus 1 is 2, so 2 damage. Um, unless I'm mistaken. Of course it does have 7 HP, but it could be just uh, chip damage from flames or something like that. But I could also just be wrong. Uh, I, always, I always forget the exact uh, heat numbers. I only know like the the important points, right? 14 AP one shots, 8 AP difference, two shots, yada yada yada. 
anyway. Morse have coming in so much in 090 with their 25 AP heat. Will double tap those level 2 ones, but of course they do only have 5 HP, right? So any fire support will easily, easily deal with them. And if they engage those two ones on their own in the forests, sure they might get a hit off, but two of them, especially with MGs, will just easily deal with them. But of course they come with Stormer as well. So you really want to engage with a Stormer and then immediately come with a Storm Engineer, so that two ones are busy shooting at a Stormer. And those one of the D's just sitting there. Just like the tank destroyers that they kind of look like to be. But of course, canonically, I guess if you want to call it that, are not. Fob is dead, Beacon 1A might as well be dead at this point. Sure, you could resupply it, but especially with, with 15 points of supply trucks that are less efficient than 20 points of supply trucks, not worth it. It is less supply intensive than the Beacon 1C. But it's really not worth it, honestly. Unless you're really, really desperate and just have another option of like, you have to win by sniping a CV, but you don't have any planes or anything else to snipe it with. So only in these kind of scenarios, it's really worth supplying them with supply drugs. And this fob is actually still alive. It could die, I think, to forest fires though. Um, I'm, I'm never 100% certain if like fob take fob taking damage from, you know, forest fires that is sit in is actually a thing or not but i think it is actually it could it can actually happen which is why some people not most of the gray under thing mentioned this says that or think that placing your fob in the forest might not be the smartest idea two ones are actually out of here um i assume that trot spotted those stuff coming in i'm sorry i didn't fully pay attention there but yeah two ones there two ones here there was also kyler somewhere is the Kyler already dead? Did I miss that too? I'm really sorry. Really, really sorry for that. And by those SCV one of the DC moved up because of the smoke. One of the SCV one. Oh no, there's there's the third one actually. It's still alive. But there's not a lot of infantry. With not a lot of, I mean, like exactly one squad. The automatic is as well turned off. We have not seen a ECR yet, but we also haven't seen any other planet, and we have actually haven't seen the automatic do anything, unless I'm mistaken, or very very little at least. There's a 103D. In situations like this, can be very very good for it, because that RPM will just murder those auto cannons. What you want to do in that case is like drive to this way, drive to that way, or something like that. Um, and there we go. Right. Doesn't have a turret, right? So he couldn't retreat while shooting at them, which means he has to stand still, and he has to turn the way the auto cannons face or the the, the things he wants to kill are. Fighting Falcon, very strong plane, puffs behind. Fighting Falcon dies, puff, kills one Roland. Um, but yeah, you could just see that, w that that's the situation where the one of three can really, really just. Yeah, it literally just died within a very short amount of time. MLU getting early damage, presumably. And with barely, I mean it. Wow. That automatic did no damage. Took three damage. Maybe a tiny bit more if just before the evac, not true. But the airfoils can be gonna in the forest now. Really, really good for AT, but of course, personally I would prefer running them in two stacks, but maybe immediately needed them and just didn't have points for a second squad. This <laughs> very scary. Very scary. If I was Boulanger, I would definitely move one of those squads there at the very least. Moving it, of course, would signal to Krauts that it is currently in danger, or might be in danger, so that might signal to Krot, hey, this could be clear. So I understand if he doesn't want to do that, but I definitely would have moved the uh, Ilsolo proper there. Uh, he did have the one of the DC here that could potentially shoot up there, but for me it would have still been too spicy. But you know, at the moment it's working out. Ooh, that could be... Oh, that, that was a side shot? Because I'm pretty sure only one of them was damaged, right? That's the one right by the explosion is here. Yeah, I guess it was a side shot. Damn. That's unfortunate, but that's that's the Eric's for you. Or maybe it got shot shot at twice. Sorry. Um I see F94 did it should shot at them free. There we go. There we go. Five pointer with one armor and one side armor. The AMX 13 has two side armor. So 90 would have not just died there on the out in the open, it would have died a bit later. <laughs> but still though. <laughs> did we want? Did he get shot at in the rear or the side? Oh, hilarious. 
also CV90 sneak around. And this, yeah, this is gonna be really, really bad for for Krat. Never one CV coming in because Bull and Jay, of course, taking plus one, capturing Fox Trot. Or M41s. And you know, you and honestly, you know, you're in a good position when you can have fire support sit there in the open and them not dying, right? That's when you know, all right, I'm in a good position here. However, that said, there are still three 2A1s alive, right? And it's, in all honesty, Bullancher doesn't have. Oh my god, I hate when this happens. Bullancher doesn't have a whole lot to go in for him at the moment in terms of infantry. But positioning wise, he's quite good. He has Bravo, complete control of Bravo without having to contest anything. And here we go, right? Those Lift Garden, because there's nothing here to stop them, Lift Garden are here now. And now, I would again prefer maybe to be a bit more up, but then again, it would allow fire support from out here to kill them once they're spotted. But now, now Boulanger gets some very, very good information. If Prot ever decides to try to capture or counter cap or do anything here, those Lift Garden will know. So as long as those Lift Garden are alive, Boulanger knows this is gonna be like 95% clear. There's always a chance that something just drives over here amphibiously or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, and it happens rarely, let's be honest. Um, other than that, he knows Bravo is clear. I don't really have to invest anything else. So I can very safely get a CV here and not have to really worry about it. And if Krot decides to do something here, first of all, he has to make sure this is clear. And if he doesn't, then he's probably going to do something to Lift Garden, which are honestly not too bad. Lift Garden killed something. So there used to be something, but probably just a five pointer, given that they have near full HP, essentially full HP and lost one AT weapon, uh, AT ammo. But yeah, if there was, if there were like two line squads or like cut of two sort of anything, could have be a different scenario. Because now Krog probably will never even try it because he may know the Lifeguard are not there, and then he's like, I'm not even gonna bother. And now everything hinges on golf and Foxtrot. I just. I, I just can't stress enough how I think how I think it's a bad decision to just give a bravo like that. Only I, there might be like a few niche scenarios where I would agree. Okay, it is a good idea, but you know, generally no. Like, look how little Bullanger has to invest here. Like, don't get me wrong, Bullanger has the better set for bravo, right? It's not like it's they are, they would fight on even ground. But at the same time, if you're defending, you always need less than when you're attacking. So to hold this foothold here is not that difficult. You don't have to invest that much compared to your opponent, to your opponent. And the other thing is, of course, if your opponent tries to push you out and fails, and they, they use everything they have, and they fail, they, they are at risk of, of giving up this town and losing this town at, and on, on Boulanger's end. Horrific, horrible. Disastrous, right? So it's not like this is, is no brainer to push Crot out if, if he decided to do something there. And especially given that Crot plays Mac, I mean both two, but he has the deck that would allow him to go wide. I mean, I'm sorry that I'm still going on over the Bravo stuff, but it just it just bugs me a bit, right? I think it's it's just a mistake that it, that mistake might not cost him the game, but that mistake might made may, might have made the game more difficult than it had to be. I don't know. And now Crot is very, very thin. That CV90 being so close yet so far. It might be able to get line of sight here, but it might not be able to shoot further than like this way. If you're relatively deep in the forest like that, you might be able to shoot a bit out, but not very far. We once are up and running again. So only if one fast can make an island squad. I would really, really like to see one more. They really work amazingly in pairs when they can essentially double tap any medium tank. You like double tap and then run away, right? They're 30 kmh fast, ridiculously fast. So you shoot and scoot away while they're reloading, right? And then, and with the 15 HP, it's really, really hard to like get rid of them. But I mean, it is going well for Boulanger at the moment. He's taking at a plus two even at the moment. Well, now it's a plus one again. So it's it's really not looking bad for him. He has a good position. He's adding points and he's ticking. But at the same time, 
There's a lot of two ones on the field, right? There's a lot of potential on the field for Crud. Which I realize might sound trying to, you know, ma make things look better than they are, but it's. I mean, there's four two ones on the field, right? Versus two one of threes and an automatic. Uh, with like a bit luck on the engagement sides and like baiting Fasi Minani, yada yada yada. If you kill those three, if you manage to kill those three key vehicles, right, suddenly it might look completely different. If Garden here, Stormer got absolutely wrecked. Yep, you always want to have something in this town. Orders, where's the M109? It's still there. Given the high aim time and lower the fire, it actually doesn't run out of ammo that quickly. Phob is dead, by the way. It, it, I guess it did die to, to fire then, huh? Maybe the beacon... It is no exclusive supply drug, so I guess maybe the beacon did finish it off with that supply. One of those two ones running low on fuel, don't give him a card out in the open. You never liked it, now they're dead. With basic loss. <laughs> oh god, Zipcard actually managed to run away. That's, that's really bad for Crud. Now Crud knows there's shit in the forest. Sometimes it's better than not knowing, right? Because when you don't know, you don't bother with it, and then you might just get lucky because they run into like three shock squads underneath or something like that. But now that he knows they're there, they're gonna, he's gonna spend time and efforts to, to get rid of them. Because they're such a big deal. Like, it's such a nuisance to have... Uh, oh, one second, I'm sorry. Alright, I don't even know why I apologize. OBS has this pog pause function, so you don't even know that I'm like gone for like 15 minutes. But it's a nice interruption for this video, and with nice, I mean, of course, it's annoying. But sorry. In any case, another push coming in from Krot. Uh, those two ones are gonna have to struggle to support him, right? Because he wants to push in here. The infantry is there, but the forest here is in the way of shooting him back. But if Krot wants to move them out, move, st move those two ones out there. If one there's Storm Engineer, but they're nearly dead. But there's also this RBS 56, of course. And with 26 AP, they hit like a truck. But yeah, Natris here pushing unsupported are just gonna get absolutely destroyed. CV90 will easily deal with any of these you know, five pointers if they come up too far. So that's. You don't wanna do that. Obviously, it's, you know, hindsight, of course. And duh. And I always. Well, not always, but. Sometimes, of course, I also make these mistakes, but typically you don't want to support, like, push with the infantry where the tanks can't support them. There we go. Ooh, what a... Surprise, it wasn't a side shot, but I think the front armor value for... Uh, the angle for what is front armor or not... Oh, you hate to see it. It's 90 degrees. Side shot by this RB56. This 2-1... So, two 2 ones lost for... Almost killing 103. Obviously not a good trade. You hate to see it. Yeah, you definitely want to, I guess, in the, if you can't deal with the sound, just smoke it off. Forehead. But, like, he has some orders. It's, it's you know, smart as, haha, just smoke it off. But, you know, smoke is incredibly powerful. Not just for, like, hiding your super heavies. And I'm not the best smoke user, sm smoke user either, right? So. But, but, but still, it's just mortars and smoke and HE more. Anything with the mortars, right? Just. Vastly underutilized, I think. And th again, that includes me. I'm not. I'm not like trying to be like, oh, I'm so good. Listen to me. I also underutilize them. <laughs> oh my god, the LVK 90 I think at this point this might just be a buy to like stop any kind of helo cheese coming from this side. I don't think he's gonna ex like try to use this offensively. But what he might try to do, and if absolute chat move for that, to, if that's what he what he want to do, what he wants to do, excuse me, is just park it here to stun planes that want to fly over there and snipe anything here. If that's his plan. Absolute galaxy brain. <laughs> it would be hilarious, and I'd, and I'd love it. And it kind of looks like that is might actually be his plan. <laughs> I don't think he's actually going to be able to like reach down here. We see the CV90 with the same autonomy, all sort of fuel here, and this is forest, right? So it's going to massively slow you down, especially with track and the mud. Radar actually turned off. I don't know. Have I don't think we have seen the ECR yet. So in this case. Turn off the automatic, sure, but I think something as relatively inexpensive as the LVK V90, I wouldn't bother. Sure, you might lose it, but having it turned on means you don't have to like react to a plane coming out, which means that it will most likely shoot much earlier. And being able to immediately shoot and not have to turn on first means you actually have a good chance of stunning a plane. I think if you try to react to the planes coming in, LVK V90 might actually have. Might not have enough time to stun a plane that flies over here. 
Um, so I think in this case I probably would just turn it on. Plus you don't know what it really is here so you don't want to just drive into something with this weapon turned off. And another push coming in here. I think that might be the first Milan 2 on this side of the map that we've seen. Maybe there was one in the open that died immediately but other than that we only see one here. The ones coming in. We do be buying those two, two A1s though but they also just die like flies. Like we have seen are those still the first three one or 3Ds that we've seen? I think I I could have sworn one died, but Will Andre didn't buy a lot of one or 3Ds throughout this game. The the issue with the one or 3Ds they dealt a lot of damage, but the real issue is just the infantry that the um, crowd just struggles to deal with, and the infantry keeps the, keep the tanks busy. When the tanks are busy, the one or 3Ds just shoot at them without getting shot at back. Another fight's giving a 90 squad. See, these ranges just are very, very rare on this map. Um, which is why these Amex 13s, they have amazing fire support, but hard to make use of them. What he probably should do is just buy like a 3 or 4 stick for, I mean, now it might be too, too late and like too expensive, but buy them like here and try to shoot it in this way. But they also just get eaten by those 1 or 3Ds as well. So, what are you gonna do? That has became an idea. I mean, maybe he just wants to keep it secret until like a certain point or something. But honestly, just turn it on. <laughs> because worst case scenario, you're sure Krat might need it, might know it's there, but then what he's gonna do? Is he gonna send something out to kill it? Well, who knows where it is next. Or he might buy a seat plane, but maybe that's a good thing. There's 150 points invested in a, in a seat plane. Okay, here we go. Push down there. Two two ones. More reservists. Panzergrunts 90. Pentagons, Natris. Oh my god, I'm sorry. My god, all these phone calls, man. I'm not I'm not ready for two phone calls a day. Fucking hell. Um I'm, <laughs> I hope this song was not too bad. The other one was like a normal good old phone there. Um yeah, sorry for the scuffed video once again, so let's get back to it. <laughs> uh, Alright, so well I'm putting ones out of you. That's that's just what they do. It's run on the field. But yeah, the push was happening here. All the support units got dealt with. There was a one of three D here in mid as well, I believe, unless he rerouted it later. Oh my god, that's not a phone call at least for once. Okay, potatoes. Five one is just easy to with those five HP squads fighting Falcon. Kind of a Kind of a panic reaction, but then again, he already had that bot anyway. MLU and Block 15 ready at the same time. Probably presuming to deal with both the MLU and, which is an ASF, of course, other than this MLU. Exact same name, don't be confused. Blue MLU, ASF. Red MLU, ADHM, plus, plus pseudo ASF. Um, to protect the MLU, I suppose. All those two ones from mid, uh, like from Golf, also got regarded here. Good decision, honestly, on, on, on Crot's end. Just make a surprise attack down here. Um, deal with just overwhelm what is here. Ooh, get favorably trades in terms of points. Force him to attack with one of these and then just, you know, use your superior position to then deal with them, right? That's probably his only avenue of actually winning outside of like trying to cheese somehow with helicopters. Um, but. Ooh, that's. That's also another thing on this map, right? These mountains. They will fuck with the Eddie Jemplins and there we go, I'm you dead. It's a downward that's there's another one though. You can want any other of you. You don't see that very often. Oh, that's one, 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 three. Yep, one, two, one dead. Fast game, yeah, 90. RB56 might have shot there as well, but they're turned off at the moment. But yeah, now there's some. He needs more infantry here, and those Panzer guys in the open, they're gonna take full damage. You hate to have infantry out in the open, at least shock infantry. Ooh, nice done. Stopping those fights coming in at 91 from hitting, but two now they're stuck reloading. And the panic reloading is gonna take a while. That's, that was a very, very good stun. Another fighting for again, probably the same one. Took some good amount of damage. Gephardt got killed by the puff. Automatic is gonna mop up some stuff here. But as we covered in the previous match, the line of sight here can be a bit fucky, so the automatic might have line of sight issues. Meanwhile, 
Generally, I want to share Red Dead. I wouldn't say perfectly, but Red Dead well it realizes, well, if he has so many 2-1s here, so much other shit here, this might be empty, and MNU goes down. This might be empty, so he just attacked with this stuff he had there. <laughs> and we gave you nine, he's still sitting here doing nothing. Okay, I guess it's moving to the road, so he wants some fast movement down there. Doesn't have a whole lot of fuel left. Um, but now the surprise is gone, right? Now Bullinger knows what to expect. However, of course, he's still lacking forces here. All those one or three got killed except for this one, but I think that might be a fresh one. MD Jupiter a bit too late. If that had moved in first, the Draguna would have shot at that, that, but then again, they have basic loss, it doesn't matter. RBS 56. Spotted by those BGS, good stealth. Very good stealth might have not been attacked there. Looked like it hit, but it did not hit. It hit the ground next to those tanks. Another RB56, again BGS spotting them. And dead. And now he's moving the CV, but he can just move the CV down here because actually in a pretty safe position. And I, I really, really like if, of course, you know, we have enough ground. I really like putting my CV here and I'm spot. Uh, Playing from Woolinger's side because nobody really expects that. But of course, it is quite close to the front line. So, quite, quite scary. You definitely want to have some smoke here because I am afraid. There we go. Is it reversing? It does have like five front armor. Four? Five, yeah. So, those other cannons don't need full damage. So, <laughs> good reading there from from thing. But that's. Yeah, you, you want to have a fob, a, a smoke there. He doesn't, he doesn't have a single mortar out. I mean, granted, you don't really need one if you're playing mech on this map, but it's still just nice to have. Oh, they got cut out in the open there. Wait to see it. Another 1 HP. And dead. Going with the Pentagrams, Elite versus Elite. But there's five pointers coming up as well. But if those Lift Garden react fast enough, or if Blanchard reacts fast enough and kills those five pointers, those Pentagrams are going to be panicked after though they explode, but it doesn't look like that's happening. But there's also Animal 135s. However, Pentagrams are going to kill those Lift Garden early enough that those Pentagrams now automatically would just shoot those Animal 135s. And yep. So now, Crot actually in a pretty good. Well, pretty decent position, and there we, yep, there we go, automatic that. Again, that's more or less what happened right now, right? He surprised Bullenger here, Bullenger rerouted stuff. Crowd was in a uh, superior position, right? The, all those 103Ds, all the infantry wasn't concentrated enough to fire, uh, like, uh, fight against the con concentrated attack. So they kind of got killed one by one by, like, three stacks of 2 ones And, oh, what a nasty shot from those RBS-56. Once more, side shot here. They can be so incredibly uh, game changing this RBS 56. But it's not much holding crud anymore in Fungstrad. He routed a lot of these IFVs, a lot of those two ones down here. Sure, they kind of cleared this out, but now, especially with the Fighting Falcon here, this is pretty much empty. There's just a 3 1 here and some line infantry over there. And what do we have coming in? 1 3 D, there's an automatic. There's some Dragoner coming in. Yes, the LVKV, let's just kill something. This, the infantry CV here is also dead, I completely failed to, to say that, I'm sorry. So, yeah. Good attack from Krot. I would say decent execution, but the follow-up wasn't quite ideal. Of course, you know, I'm never, I, never say, I never say that I don't make these kind of mistakes, right, or never throw away games. And I'm not saying Krot really threw away a game here, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, that RBS 56 really, really set him back there. Uh, because if he had a 2 one up back there, or even both of the 2 ones ideally, sitting here would have. It's a lot more difficult for Punisher to come back. And here we go, 1 3 with its 15 RPM, killed the 2 one there. And now, Crot is losing this foothold and lost these Grenadiers here. Doesn't have much left in Foxrod suddenly. So this is going to be a quite close game, but Bullinger still ticking and already or like still in the conquest point lead. See even that just just a tad bit, just a tiny bit too deep in the forest to actually shoot at anything. Ah, that's unfortunate. 
however. Oh no, never mind. I was gonna say not not much, you know, stopping that from just rolling over. But there is a 103D. That can certainly stop a bunch of infantry or whatnot to just move throughout the open and kill whatever is here. One, that was like of Kyler, CV. If yeah, if that thing would fit just five meters further more and could shoot down there, it could have done so much damage, or just not really a whole lot because it might have been spotted immediately and then killed. That's gonna sign it. Do kill the LVK V90, which killed something. It did wet up, so it did do something. But I think if he immediately, if he just kept it turned on or had it turned on the whole time, might have done some more. Might have done in a lot more indirectly because. Um, Crowd having to like deal with this thing you and his lines might have like caused a lot of points and attention again. One of three being smoked off, very good decision. Those pentagrams do spot that thing. RB56, it's 26 AP, just enough to one shot a Kyler. Again, the 12 armor Kyler It's just holding it back. It it's like not a garbage tank, but if that thing had 13 armor. Oh baby. Kills the CV though. And Krod is ticking. But for how long? I'm not sure if Krod, I don't think Krod will be able to hold this. Like, look what's coming. Not even just the Fenex, but with no AA around here, those Fenex will do a lot of damage. Just one Kyler. I mean, they're gonna die. And M41s, Liv Garden, more Liv Garden. Two 103Ds. He's not gonna hold this for too long. And he already lost his most, like, the foothold he had up here, and barely has anything to really hold in there. Fighting fucking coming in. <laughs> Pentagrams killed one of the Fenex at least. I never actually noticed the visual effects when bombs hit the water. Actually, kind of cool. And yep, there we go. Not much holding Crot. Or like, Crot did manage to deal with SCV. But that's plus one for. Okay, let's assume this CV is not gonna get bought, right? Plus, f plus one for six minutes. That is 90 points. So five and a half minutes left. That's seventy-five half minute it's like say eighty points. He's gonna be at 180. So at best with a plus one he's gonna get a draw. With a few points more than Bullinger has. But that would mean having control of both golf and fox throughout the whole time. Which, for example, now is not happening because he's moving the CV. Um, because it's unlikely it's gonna count contest or uncap Bravo, and unlikely either it's gonna happen to Echo or Alpha either. So he has to keep it kept and not let Bunanji counter cap or let Lone cap himself throughout the rest of the game, and that's just unlikely. So I think we all know how this is gonna end. Think, but like, given that the game is not going through its time limit, peace run coming in. I mean, it's a peace run on the CV here, but it just dies. And so did the CV. What? What did I miss? What the fuck did I miss? How did the CV die? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did the CV 90 kill it? It might have, I guess. Maybe it thought he sat here and spotted it. I guess that's probably what happened. Hmm. Sorry for the, the voice crack. I, I I swear I'm done with purity. <laughs> Just joking. Um, of course I'm not done yet. There you go. It's just ah, just a tiny bit. Ah, just the tiniest, the smallest drop of petrol, please. That's an RBS. Oh, nearly got another one. Come on, can we get a Kyler? Can we get a Kyler? Yes! I mean, side or front armor, it doesn't really matter with this thing, right? One shot, 12 armor, and there we go. It was a valiant effort from Grot towards the end. Could have actually turned around the game, but just wasn't quite enough, and then it fell apart again. Um, grew some early grind throughout the first half of the game, where he just always just come out on the got like got the short end of the stick in these engagements um but it's mac v mac and um Boulanger just played better still 
I'm I don't I'm not saying that he lost just because of that, of course, you know. There's a lot more factors coming into that. Still not a fan of just abandoning Bravo or the top zone. I think it was Bravo like that, but I, I had a long enough rant about that. Multiple events even. Um I hope the phone call interruptions and whatnot weren't too annoying. Uh, and yeah. Any case, this was game one. There's going to be at least two games. It's the best of three. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Later.